Okay, girls, get on your feet. Get on your feet for a minute. Now, some, how many of you were here a couple of years ago when I taught you the mom war cry? Anybody? Clap your hand. Okay. We're going to start this off, our time together, our small group time together. And uh, we're going to do the mom war cry, and it goes a little bit like this. And you want to bring this up from your ovaries, okay? <laughs> So right now, just got to do that, just find them. Some of you lost them. And we're just going to do this. Can you do that? Are you serious? Can you do that, Harps Moms? Yes, you. Yes, yes. All right. Come on. Come on, release your ovaries. Come on. Yes. Now you may sit down. Now see, I wanted to start that way. I know, wasn't that fun? So you do that when you go home. You do that at church. You know, I used to do that hanky thing, you know? Forget that. Pastor says something you like, you just go, oh! Do that at your kids' school events. They love it in junior high. They love it. I go, please, Mom, please, do that again. All right, so listen, our ovaries unite us. Granted, some of you have sassy ovaries. Your ovaries are like, hello, hello. And some of your ovaries are like mine, the Wicked Witch of the West. They're like, melting, melting, melting. Some of you have had your ovaries yanked, all right? But nevertheless, it's what unites us. And at one time, um, it was my second born, I just had him, and I decided to go on vacation because I'd had my second born. And uh, <laughs> my husband and I thought it'd be a great idea to go jet skiing. So I got on the back of a jet ski at the Lake of the Ozarks. And uh, I got out, and I was like bent over. I'm like, oh, my ovaries. Oh. <laughs> So this is, this is what I want you to hear as I talk about this. There's going to be little lines where you want to get back to me. Ovaries. Can you do that? Give that to Ovaries. Thank you. All right, and all the sound men are like, I hate this weekend. I just <laughs> hate this weekend. All right, our ovaries unite us because here's the thing. I picked up a little Apple iPhone, hate it, and uh, can't, can't figure it out. So I'm trying to find out how to get here. At one point, I'm like, Rick, let's just get out and walk, because I don't know. But I was like, forget Siri. I've got GPS. I've got ovaries, OK? You've got them. I and you know what I'm talking about in your family? You know, they're like, Mom, I can't find my jeans anywhere. I've looked and looked. I can't find them anywhere. And that's like your 17-year-old. And you're like, wait a minute. Engage ovaries, and you start walking around. Mm. Mm. Beep, beep, beep. Ah! There it is. Right there you go. So I've got a GPS system. They are also a lie detector system. Now listen, some of you need to quit saying, look me in the eye. You need to say, look me in the ovaries. Like, talk to the ovaries, because I'm not buying it. <laughs> and they're also a poop detector. <laughs> when they're babies, you're like, mmm, something smells. <laughs> when they're teenagers, they come in a half hour late, you're like, mmm, something really smells. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it unites us. It unites us and it prepares us. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the glory and the angst of lower expectations. All right, lower, lower your expectations. L lower, <laughs> low, real low. Because if you start out here, you're like rarely disappointed. <laughs> right? Now, I would have been a front row mom. 20 years ago. As a speaker, I would have had sassy ovaries. 
And I would have been talking about all those ideals, all those good things, you want to hold on to those, but it's also wise just to lower your expectations. <laughs> and here's the good news, your kids will help you with this. <laughs> They're so good at this, they just help us. Now here's how I know it's true. Think about your children. If you have just one, just kind of work with me. If you have more than one, think about your first child and when you take him, let's say, to the church nursery or to some mom's group and you have to leave him with the nursery. That baby is like, like Velcro on you. Am I right? They're like, and you're like, uh-uh, I'm not taking my baby. Mm -mm -mm. And you're in church and the deacon, you know, the elder kind of gives you that look like, we have a nursery. And you're like... <laughs> So you go and like you, you kind of hand them over and you're like, okay, are you going to call me if they start crying? Do you have my number? Do you have my text? Do you have my Facebook messaging? Do you have that? Can you do that for me? And you like don't want to hand them over, all right? Then you have the second child. And the second child, you're like, woo, we're going to church today. All right. Got that toddler. You're like throwing them over the gate. You're just like pitching them over. And then, lower expectations, the third child. The third child, you are met in the hallway by the security. And they ask you, is Patrick your child? And you're like, hmm, I don't know. Who's asking him why? Anybody been there? Lower your expectations. It's like this in school, you're first born, you're like, yes! Yes, our role. I am so proud of you. Oh my gosh, 4.16. You're just like so amazing. The second born, lower your expectation. Yes, C's get degrees. Yes, yes. Woo! Woo! Then there's the third child. And Michelle Duggar, I'm just not quite sure what to do with 18, 19 of those. I'm going to have to work on that material a little bit. But the third child, you're like, yes! It was only an in-school suspension. Yes! 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 Lower, lower, lower. See, and the only ones really laughing are the ones with teenagers. They're like, preach it! Yeah! Set me free. Yes, yes, yes. <sighs> they give you so much fun stuff, don't they, your kids? You wouldn't be nearly as funny as you are if you didn't have children. You wouldn't have as many wrinkles, but you wouldn't be as funny as you are. For instance, that third child, the one that I'm just going to be thankful that we can send out any type of announcement in May. Just in any type of announcement in May. But when he was just a little guy, one time, we're a very modest family. Anybody modest in here? It took me years to not be modest. And, and um, anyway, we're very modest. And I lived, we lived in a house, and I didn't have an official dressing room. Our bedroom was very small. So I'd have to go downstairs to the laundry room to get ready. And so we had trained the children. In fact, I had a rule when I was alone with the children that if I'm in the shower, if you ever hear a loud noise, a crashing sound, do not come in the bathroom, and B, do not call 911. Because 911 consisted of the high school ag teacher, the manager at Ludlam Grocery Store. You know, we just didn't need that to happen. So just very modest. So I was getting ready one morning downstairs, and Patrick just barrels in. He was like two years old. All of two years old, he just barrels in. And I was like, oh, Patrick. Ah. He's like two years old. They're so male. They're so male. He just, he starts at my feet. Wait for it. Then he says, whoa. Mom, you got nice elbows. I love it! Love it, love it, love it! Ah! We're seasoned therapy now, that's why he couldn't be here this week.